I'm Andrew Haunt. On this episode, we're going to take a look through some of my vintage horror magazine collection. There is some cool stuff in these 80s and 90s horror magazines that I've got, and I want to share some of these awesome treasures with you. So I figured it was about time I started showing you through the vintage horror magazine archive, because these things are treasure troves of cool stuff. I'm going to go through four in this initial video. I'm going to go through an issue of Gore Zone, Gore Zone number four, Slaughterhouse, the first issue of Toxic Horror, and an issue, of course, of Fangoria, the most popular, most famous horror magazine ever. So let's start with the Gore Zone. Now, do be warned. This video contains images that are not suitable for minors, so I'm going to put an age warning on this one. So, Gorezone from the creators of Fangoria. So what we've got here, Hellraiser 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, um, Anthrax, there's some cool stuff in here, Waxwork and American Gothic, so that should date it for you. So this is issue number 4, this was November, was this 88? Uh, yeah, 1988. So let's check out this issue of Gorezone. Back from when horror movies were horror movies and VHS tapes were being bootlegged. So we've got, let's have a look at some of the cool features, some of the cool ads in these things. Got a phantasm image there. We've got a deep red advert. Now I would pick these things up either, eh, Demons 2, um, either second hand or I would pick them up new whenever I could. The second hand ones were the ones that I particularly enjoyed for the older content because I'm a huge fan of 80s movies. American Gothic. What else have we got in here? See, so this is back from this is back from when magazines were only partially colour. And some of them black and white, and then you get the colour content towards the middle. The young and the skinless. So this is the feature on Hellraiser 2 and ah oh, Hellraiser 2. What a film, what a horror movie. What a great way to continue that story and that franchise. Shame it went the way it did, but you know, those first two films, the first is a classic, the second is classic in different ways for a different reason. We've got wax work in here, that was fun. That was a fun film. I remember renting that back in the video chess days. Now, one of the great things about the this era of magazines is that they came with posters. Now, some of my vintage horror magazines do still have the posters inside. So in this one, we've got a classic, iconic image of Freddy Krueger on one side and there's exploding bodies on the other. Why not? Then we've got an image from uh, it's Phantasm 2. Poster from Phantasm 2. <laughs> And one of Aussie, as there is a feature on the connection between horror movies and heavy metal in this issue. And of course, Aussie did the Bark at the Moon video. Um, now, I loved these mask adverts. These mask adverts were just brilliant. These, are, to me, the adverts in the back of horror magazines are like the adverts in um, comic books where you would get x-ray specs and things like that. I would always see things like these brilliant masks I always wanted these masks. I mean, how could you not want half a corpse? Fantastic. So we've got a, a feature on Rennie Harlan when he was making Not Rennie Street for the Dream Master. And uh, what happened with that film? I quite like Dream Master. It's not bad. It's good fun. Well, it's a lot of fun, actually. What am I saying? Compared to Dream Warriors that came before it, it's not brilliant. But compared to Dream Child that came after it, it's a classic. I really like all of them for different reasons, but I do fully acknowledge that not all the Elm Street movies are brilliant. Um, it's Joe Balladonna from Anthrax. There's the, the feature on the crossover between heavy metal and horror. There's often fiction in these magazines too. Some more cool adverts. We've got some book adverts here. What we got? Some stuff on Famous Monsters from Filmland with the marvellous Forrest J. Ackerman. There's a good documentary on him. I think it's just called Famous Monster. Do check that out. Um, the Art and Technique Special Makeup Effects of Tom Savini. I've got a Tom Savini book. Dick Smith. 
there's some great stuff there. Just fabulous, fabulous things. Driving Madness, the video. Now, one of the things I really loved in these horror magazines was that they showed you how a lot of the effects were done. So we've got how to make a demon here. Now, this is very cool. It's by Doug Drexler, and it takes you through step by step of mold making and appliance making and painting and so on, and how these uh, parts are applied to an actor. Now that's one of the reasons I was never really freaked out by horror movies because I'd researched at great length how these things got made and it's just cool. Nice video listings there. What do we see? I bet I can see one here that was banned in the UK. Um, hmm. Actually several of these were. Nice comprehensive video catalogue there back when these were such a thing. Classifies for movie scripts and movie posters. And then you got that weird thing with American magazines where some stuff is continued at the back that started at the front. I never really understood that. At the end of the issue, there was Future Shock telling you what was coming in the next issue. And I love these. I love it that these um, shirts and, and sweaters for Evil Dead 2, Predator, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre were on white shirts. It just seems like, hey, this is a lovely, cheerful shirt. And then you've got Leatherface with a chainsaw. On the back, we've got adverts for Star uh, Starlog, Fangoria, Comic Scene, and indeed Gore Zone. That is a beautiful, beautiful little nugget of um, genre film history right there. So, next, let's go on to something a little less well known as Gore Zone. Let's have a look at Slaughterhouse. Now, this issue of Slaughterhouse, this is, uh, this is the first issue of Slaughterhouse. And it dates from mid 80s, I think. Oh, 88, sorry, I do apologize, 88. So on the cover, we've got Fright Night 2, which rules. We've got Linear Quigley. I mean, come on, Linear Quigley, legend. And we've got They Live, as well as Deadly Spawn 2, Metamorphosis, Fiction, Comics, Horrifying Independent Section. So let's check out this. Again, we've got black and white interior. I think this is all black and white. No, some of it's color interior. And these are, they're a wonderful time capsule, these things, from when movie news was valued a lot more than it is here and now. I do think that the, the value of a lot of media has sunk in recent years. Not that there's less artistry, there's certainly a lot of artistry still going on. Ah, <laughs> Steam King. Meteor shit. But I don't, I don't feel that with streaming, and with the instant gratification of streaming and uh, downloading films and so on, I don't think there's the same value put on these things than uh, there was back in the day. These were prized, prized things. Deadly Spawn 2, Metamorphosis. I've not seen the second one. I have, however, seen the Deadly Spawn, the first one, which is a, a masterpiece of schlocky, zero-budget horror. Look at these beasts in here. Very cool. Very cool indeed. I really must check that out, the uh, the second Deadly Spawn movie. That's from the TV series Monsters. Ah, that's from the first Deadly Spawn movie. Had that on VHS. Had a lovely big box of that. With the enormous murderous cocks from space. So what we've got here is some stuff on the Monsters TV series, which was, um, oh, hang on, sorry. It's Friday Night Part 2 now. What was going on there then? A page about monsters. Now we're on to Fright Night Part 2, a very worthy sequel and a mainstay of a lot of uh, my uh, video rental evenings. I did buy the uh, X rental tape of this, but in the over the years my collection has been sold off. So I've still got some tapes left, but I don't have the ridiculously comprehensive collection that I once did. They Live, now there is a masterpiece of genre cinema, a genuine masterpiece of genre cinema. Apart from the usual thing that people bring up with, you know, the, the obey signs and the, uh, I came here to chew gum and kick ass that, the uh, the famous line, it is a really good film and it is, does pay for the rewatching. It is really entertaining in a lot of ways. So nice cool feature on They Live. Shot from the thing. Review section, what's in the review section? We've got Phantasm 2. Nice. I like the Phantasm movies. I don't think they get enough love. 
What else have we got? We've got The Blob. The Blob was a really good remake. The 1988 remake of The Blob was a really strong remake. As far as remakes go, it was very, very impressive. What else have we got? Slide in the City, the Subterranean Butcher Shop. What's this? Oh, this is the low budget feature. And some awesome low budget movies. I love seeing the creativity that was involved in a lot of low budget horror at the time. We've got Toxie. I love a bit of Toxie. Killing spree. And there she is, the queen herself, Lanier Quigley. The queen of scream queens, or how Lanier Quigley destroyed my life. I'm sure that is something that a lot of people would have welcomed at the time. But there she is. A thoroughly entertaining person. If you're not familiar with who Lynette Quigley is, seriously educate yourself. She's an absolute legend, a real Scream Queen legend. There she is with Brink Stevens as well. Another of the classic Scream Queens. That's a shot from Night of the Demons that uh, got rewound a lot by many teenage boys. Ogor Productions, specialists in low budget horror and heavy metal videos. Now that is cool, you just will not see that in there. Absolutely awesome. Love it. Mind killer. Check that out. I do remember that. I've seen Mind Killer many, many years ago. Satisfying film. Goblins. Jesus, that was a missed opportunity, goblins. A few sections in there. What have we got? Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity. May stay the old sci-fi channel late nights. Nightmare Sisters, that's got Lynette Quigley in it, as well as Brink Stevens. And uh, that is so fun. David Decotto. Seriously, get drunk, get some wings, watch Nightmare Sisters. Probably not one to watch with a partner. I don't think it would go down very well, but it's... Um, but the Nightmare Sisters probably did. Sorry, that was a terrible joke. That was a really bad joke. I'm going to... I take that back. That was a terrible joke. I shouldn't have made that. Sorry. Um, but anyway, what else have we got in here? Let's check out these uh, classifieds. Portraits of peculiar people. Trading card sets of freaks. Awesome. A Lanier Quigley fan club. I wonder if I could still send a money order. Gorshriek, the comic book. The fiction piece. And some book reviews. Good stuff. Not quite on the same level as Slaughterhouse, sorry, as, as Gorzone, or indeed Fangoria, but still cool. Okay, Toxic Horror. Now, this fascinated me for ages. I saw this advertised in Gorzone once, and I really wanted to get hold of this particular issue, so I tracked it down and was very pleased that I did. In terms of feel, it's very much along the same lines as Gorezone. So we've got Freddy, Jason and Michael. Can they still cut it? Phantom of the Opera, that was also Robert England. Nightmare 5, The Wit and Wisdom of Freddy Krueger. So they also have put a pretty shit sequel, but, you know, I enjoyed it at the time. Basket Case, director of Dismembers Frankenstein. Oh, I love Basket Case. Boogerman, Teens Run, Teens Run Wild, horror comics. Let's have a look here. It's Jason, uh, I think that's from part seven. New Blood. I know that gets a lot of hate, that film, but I like that one. So this, again, it feels pretty much like the more they live. Like Gorzone. It goes a bit more for the for the jugular, if you will. Cut off leg. How much was a cut off leg? $29.95. A bargain. I always wanted to check these out. I always wanted a room full of these masks. One day I may still get that. What have we got here? Oh, there's the Phantom of the Opera, played by Robert Englund. So I could still never get away from having loads of appliances put on his face. I do hear from friends that Robert is a lovely, lovely guy. I understand that some of my friends ran into him in a pub after he'd done a, a uh, event and hung out with him for ages, and he was cool. Expose human darkness. I do love print media. And I've been edging more and more towards using more print media again recently. Oh, this is awesome. Because I'm getting a bit tired of knowing that 
huge companies can see what I'm watching. There is a, a great shirt from uh, my buddies at Lunch Me. Hey, Josh. That, uh, that says the CIA can't see what's in your VCR. There is the larger of my two cats. Hey, Pumpkin, are you joining me? Mustafa on Freddy, classic poster from Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors with Freddy and Nancy. Horror comics. Oh, Frank Henenlotter, horror's best hope. Oh, you know, I would have to agree with that. He made some amazing things. He made Brain Damage, he made Basket Case, and he's just a badass. Frank and Arca. One a day. You see, there's a nice variety to these, to these magazines with independent stuff, weird stuff about special effects, and indie movies, and Cat's back. Hey, dude. How are you, buddy? You want to join in? Do you want your own channel? Yes, it would be hours of me licking myself inappropriately in front of a camera. You want only fans for that, dude, not a YouTube channel. So that is pretty much it for that issue of Toxic. So we shall bring this to a close with a classic Fangoria, by far the most popular, most famous, most well-known horror magazine, horror movie magazine ever. This one has been repaired with some tape a couple of times. I just love this. I love this issue greatly. I love all of them really. And yet, while I've got rid of a lot of, I've got rid of most of my magazines and things like that for different genres, but the horror magazines will stay with me because there's something very special and very evocative of that era for me here. Not least because there's Stephen King turning into a plant in Creepshow. So, Fango, this issue of Fango is from, uh, where is this from? The entire content is copyright in 1985. Is that about right? Friday the 13th, new beginning, so yes, uh, that is 85 as far as I'm aware. I think so. I'll check on my phone, but I'm filming with it. So, what have we got here? That's a cool reader makeup. The Postal Zone. Ah. See, there's so many things that I miss about magazines. And one of them is the letters page. The letters page is a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and another is the fact that all this stuff is together in one publication. Now, I get my pop culture news from places like, uh, you know, IGN.com or Comic Book Resources, you know, CBR.com, places like that. And thank you, Pumpkin for joining me and um, it's cool it's it's great to get it from those sites but it only takes a few seconds to get the, to get the news whereas with the magazines you would wait a month or whatever for them to come out and then you could really just pour over them sit down and take it in for hours as if you so wanted to and then reread and everything like that but with a website page how many times are you really going to revisit something I mean, ever? Classic shot of Heather Langenkamp in the, in the original Nightmare on Elm Street there with a uh, special effects artist sticking his hand through a bath. Great shot, great shot. Really simple execution. Fangoria Rhino Records brings you blood on the tracks. What have we got here? A little shop of horrors. Elvira presents Vinyl Carb. Okay. Things like the Monster Mash, <laughs> Purple People Eater, fantastic horror rock classics. I would buy all of those. Not just another cog in the Corman factory. Now that looks fun. Jack Hill, the director of Spider Baby and Sorceress, on his 20 years with Roger Corman, from the frantic mid 60s to the decline of Corman's new world. I have read all of these magazines, but I do really want to revisit that. I loved reading about Roger Corman and what he got away with. It's fascinating. The Institute of Studio Makeup Limited. Commit yourself to the Institute. Spider Baby, the Fangoria record shelf. What is there records in this Fangoria? But yeah, you would you'd get all this cool stuff. 
films you hadn't heard about, you would get no spoilers about the things. There'd be no like set photos or anything like that. So you weren't aware of things being made and the process as much until you got hold of Fangoria or Go or Gorzone, or indeed things like Starlog or you know all the other genre magazines that have been out there. I miss things like Wizard and Hero as well. They were they were great for comic stuff. Pen the pen. Meet the Ghoul Brothers. Now that's awesome. Talented readers show us what they think the hideous musical combo looks like in our Ghoul Brothers makeup contest. That is so cool. There's some serious talent going on there. That is awesome. Ha! Huh. That's kind of Cenobite-y. A Ratfink thing going on there. Some more traditional zombie style makeups. <laughs> so fun. Let's see. Them. Okay. That's just the greatest thing ever. That, I would love to see that in a movie. That's just fantastic. Love it. Dick Miller on TV. Elvira. Elvira's getting a lot more attention at the moment, and that's great. I think she's a lot of fun. The character is a lot of fun. I think Cassandra Peterson is just very cool and really interesting person. I do have the... Um, I have her autobiography on back order because everywhere seems to be sold out of it. The FX of Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Oh, I never thought I would actually miss Jason Voorhees. Why would you miss Jason Voorhees? God-awful film. Friday the 13th should have ended with part three. You know, it should have just stopped there. The stuff. Now there is a cult classic. That was a weird film. About killer marshmallowy type goo but why not everything else had an outing white slimy goo might as well the video I have Dr Cyclops see I do appreciate that in uh, the dark side the, the UK horror movie magazine which is still going there is still a DVD review section and I love that it gives you a nice look at these things Slasher writer from College Poet to Friday the 13th Part 4 and Killer Party, Barney Cohen has rediscovered a passion for horror and has turned it into a screenwriting career. <sighs> Can I do that, please? I'd love that. I have written movie scripts. I just want to do more because it's so fun. One with Jerry Warren. It's easy to see why Fangoria was so popular. I mean, this, this issue in particular, it really kind of bridges the gap between a modern horror magazine, or was contemporary at the time anyway, and Famous Monsters of Filmland. And I totally see that. It's a little bit pulpy, it's a lot of fun, it's quite tongue-in-cheek. And that is the thing, with horror magazines, the finest horror magazines were always the ones that were tongue-in-cheek and had some fun with the content and what they were putting across. Rock video. David Lee Roth, met him, lovely bloke. Although he was very drunk, so he might not be a lovely bloke. He may just have been drunk at the time and nice to me through that way. Exciting movie tie-in magazines. So the back page of this ends with movie tie-in magazines. And I loved these. My favourite one, not going to lie, it was the Masters of the Universe live action film. And I know how terrible that was. But yes, there is a fun little look at some cool horror magazines. And I'm going to do this again sometime soon because I've enjoyed revisiting those and showing them to you guys. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Planet Hex. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.